Welcome back to STS. In today's video, we're going to use the difference quotient on a trig function. And again, we're going to find the slope and the equation of the tangent line uh, at a particular value of x. So let's begin by finding the uh, y value. f of x we know is the same thing as y. And actually, let me change colors. f of x is the same thing as y. And here we're saying for cosine of x, here x is pi over 4 we want to get that x value. Let's quickly draw a quick sketch of a right triangle to help us figure this out. All right, well this here is saying that pi over four is the angle in question here. And we know, and we know that uh, from special triangles that this length here is one, this length is one, and this length here is square root two. If you're confused by that, please visit some of our um, other videos on the YouTube archive that talks about special triangles. With cosine, its relationship is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So here we have 1 over root 2. And we have to do something called rationalizing because we never want a uh, radical in our denominator. So to rationalize, I multiply numerator and denominator by root 2. And my answer comes out to be root 2 over root 2. So my point of tangency is pi and root 2 over 2. Next, I want to go ahead and use the difference quotient. So let's go ahead and define it to start. The difference quotient is f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of the original function with a new independent variable x plus h minus the original function where everything here is divided by h. So let's begin. Let me just rewrite. The limit as h approaches 0. We're going to take the original function and change the independent variable to x plus h. So this turns into cosine x plus h minus the original function. And the, ori and the original function is cosine x. And we're going to end up again dividing everything by h. We have to fall back to trig. We see here that cosine with these two values is actually um, the sum formula is what we're going to have to use. So this here turns into the limit as h approaches 0. And with cosine, that turns into cosine x, cosine h, where they're, where they're being multiplied together, minus uh, sine x, sine h. And where all that is, the, is uh, minus the original function, which is cosine x. And again, everything is divided by h. First thing I want to do is to group my cosines together. So I'll begin, I'll continue up here. Limit as h approaches 0. Let's put uh, the cosine x, cosine h, minus, I need to pull that minus sign in front of the cosine x, where all oh, that's divided by h, minus the limit as h approaches 0 of sine x sine h again where all that is divided by h first thing I'm going to do here for this left hand side is to factor out a cosine x so I have the limit as h approaches 0 cosine x that leaves me with a cosine h and this here turns into a 1 and my denominator here is still h and the right hand side here. What I'm going to do is this sine x, this factor, I can pull this factor off front. Uh, because it doesn't deal with the uh, value h that's approaching 0, the sine x can come out front. So I have sine x times the limit as h approaches 0 of sine h divided by h. Here for the uh, next statement, the cosine x is a factor. It doesn't have the h as h approaches 0, so that can also be pulled out front. So I have cosine x times the limit of h as it approaches 0. And here I'm left with cosine h minus 1 over h. And this statement here, instead of rewriting, I'm just going to um, bring it down, bring down an arrow and show a, and place a dot here. All right, so now as we begin to evaluate, we have cosine x. Um, a limit that we should have memorized is this cosine h minus 1 over h. That there is going to simplify down to 0. 
Um, I'm going to have some other videos talking about the limits where we can actually see uh, how that approaches zero. If you were to graph it, you would see that as h approaches zero from the left and right, this limit also approaches zero. All right, bring down this minus sign here. Bring down sign x right here. And another limit that we need to memorize is the uh, sine h over h. So as h approaches zero, the limit of this function approaches one. And again, if we were to actually graph that, we would see from the left and right, it approaches one. Now we begin to evaluate, evaluate what's left over. We know zero times anything is zero, minus, and then one times sine x gives me that sine x. So here the derivative, or f prime of x, is equal to negative sine x. All right. Now let's find the actual value of the derivative, or what the actual slope is equal to, when x is pi over 4. So here let's go ahead and change color again. Let's go to green. And we're going to say f prime of pi over 4 is equal to negative sine x. All right, we're going to use this same drawing we used here. When we talk about the sine, its relationship is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So here we have 1 over root 2. So this here is equal to negative. And then we have 1 over root 2. And again, I have to rationalize. So that's going to come out to be um, negative root 2 over 2. When I rationalized, all I did was multiply the numerator and denominator by root 2 like I did up here. So when I do that here, I end up with the same result, except for this time it is uh, negative. All right, now I've got the point of tangency. I have the slope. Let me just scroll down a bit. And I want to actually create the, um, the equation for that tangent line. All right, so we're going to use, again, let's go ahead and change color to keep everything separate. Let's go back to blue. Here we said that y is equal to mx plus b. Well, we know that y is root 2 over 2. m we just found to be negative root 2 over 2. We're going to keep the x. And then we're going to add b because that's what we need to find. Um, you know what? Let me take a step back. I'm sorry. x, we're going to actually use uh, pi over 4. So let me go ahead and, and erase that. Actually, let me rewrite the whole thing. So that there is going to turn into m, we just said, was negative root 2 over 2. x is pi over 4. And then b is what we need to find. I'm not going to evaluate all this because it's going to come out to a long decimal. We're going to keep everything in these in these approximate forms. So let's go ahead and add this portion to the left hand side because I'm subtracting it here on the right. So I do the opposite to move it to the left. So this here turns into root 2 over 2 times pi over 4 plus root 2 over 2 is what equals b and I can extend the page. I can uh, evaluate this a little bit more. I've got pi times uh, root 2 and 2 times 4 to give me 8 plus root 2 over 2 to give me b. Now let's go ahead and write the equation now that I have the uh, y-intercept. So this here says that y is equal to m which we found to be Negative, two, oh, negative root 2 over 2x plus this portion here, which is b. So this here is where we're going to have pi times root 2 over 8 plus root 2 over 2. And again, anytime we start getting away from uh, basic um, easy values, we start to get more complicated um, results with our, with our work. All right, let's go ahead and pull up the calculator so that we can verify some of this work here. All right, with the calculator, the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and put in the point of tangency, which I'm showing here as pi over 4 um, as the x value and root 2 over 2 as the y value. So let's click on the stat button. From stat, let's keep it at 1. And for L1, let's put in uh, pi over 4. So alpha y equals to make it a fraction. We want 1. The numerator here is going to be pi. So second pi. Arrow down and our denominator is 4. 
we press enter and we get the decimal approximation. Let's arrow over to L2 or list 2. For list 2, again, we want a fraction. So second, y equals, and then 1. The fraction we're going to put in now is root 2 over 2. So second, x squared to get the radical sign. Put in a 2, arrow down, put in another 2, press enter, and again, we see the decimal equivalent. Let's go ahead and press the y equals button. When we press y equals, we see that I have the original equation. Let's see if I can scroll back. The original equation here is the uh, cosine x. And then if you remember, or as I, let's move this over some. And if I scroll all the way down here to the bottom, we see that we have the same uh, equation here for the, for the tangent line. y equals negative uh, root 2 over 2x plus uh, root 2 over 2. I've got that in the last in middle position here, last position here. I'm adding so the order doesn't matter. And then the last term, uh, pi over pi times root 2 over 8. And that's what I have here, pi times root 2 over 8. All right, now let's go ahead and click on Zoom. And let's set it at 6, which would be the standard. And then press Enter so we can see what's going on. Oops press enter so we can see what's going on and it draws it in where blue is the original function we see the green here you see the green uh, square which is our point of tangency and now here comes the red uh, which is the tangent uh, to that to that point all right let's let that continue to draw in and let's go ahead and zoom in so we can get a better picture of what's going on so let's press zoom and then two to zoom in and we want to zoom in uh, where the origin is the center and again we're going to see this drawing where the blue is the original the green box is the point of tangency and then here we see the tangent line coming into play alright and then the one last thing I want to do is I want to actually show that we get uh, very similar results when we uh, work on this uh, by hand so let's do second and then quit First thing I want to do is call up the derivative, so I'm going to press uh, alpha, let's press y equals, and I want to go over to function, so hit the window key, and if we look, number 3 is for derivative, so press 3, and here we want to take deriv the derivative with respect to x, so press the x, and the function that we're going to use is cosine of x, and we want to find that when the x value is at pi over 4, so again, alpha y equals, we want to press 1 and second and up arrow to get pi arrow down and place in the 4 and here we're going to see what the actual value of the derivative is for this particular function at that x value All right. also note that the TI uh, 84 calculator uses something called uh, numerical approximation and with the numerical approximation we're still going to get accurate answers but they are going to uh, differ uh, when it comes as we have more decimal points. So maybe the first six or seven decimal points will be the same. Once we go beyond that, they begin to differ. But for what we're doing, uh, that minor or, or very small difference is not going to uh, make a difference. All right, let's go ahead and look at the other, the other expression. We said the derivative of cosine x came out to be negative sine x so we're going to use negative sine and we want to find out what that is what that expression is when we're at the pi over 4 so again alpha y equals we want 1 and second up arrow and then click the down arrow we want 4 right arrow and then right parenthesis and here we see that we do have answers that are very close but they're off on these last three um, decimal places. If we were to round, then this would also turn into a seven. But for it to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to be to be accurate within seven decimal places, that's more than enough um, accuracy for what we're doing. And then the last thing I want to show is that when this was at, when we evaluated that, the answer came out to be negative root two over two. So let's go ahead and see what the actual value is for negative root 2 over 2 with the, uh, with the calculator here. 
So root 2, oops, actually I need to insert. So that's my negative there. And we set negative root 2 over 2. Alright, and we see these bottom two came out to be the same because by our hand calculation we calculated those to be the same and this derivative is off by uh, these last three uh, decimal places. Alright, that sums it up for this video by Spell of Tutorial Services. Please friend us on Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thank you again for watching.